I bet you didn't know that ramen noodles is ruining your art. Same goes for your parents. Same goes for your Instagram account. There are so many ways for you to self-sabotage. I wouldn't be surprised if you have more than one of these. Welcome to Art Mentor. My name is Sean. I need to warn you about the most toxic habits that will ruin your art and your future. And if these are you, I want to help you get back on track. Now, the first and biggest one that you got to watch out for, this is a big self-destructive tendency, y'all, is as soon as you're done with your artwork, what do you do? Do you show it off to people? And then do you feel bad if you don't get what you're looking for out of it? If you don't get enough likes and follows, if you don't get enough attention off of it, if you're not getting the positive feedback that you want, y'all, you got a little bit of a problem called validation, okay? And listen, this is not going to work out for you. It's going to be a totally toxic, self-destructive habit because at the end of the day, if you are satisfied, if you are fulfilled within yourself, regardless of what other people think, then you are going to feel great about it. And your clients are going to feel great about it too. And you're going to continue to progress in your career and in your directions that you want. When I see too many artists do, especially young artists, is that they're constantly trying to find somebody or something to confirm that they are doing the right thing and they're on the right path. Instead of looking inward and saying, yes, I feel good about this. Because here's the thing, y'all. If you're looking for external validation, you'll never find internal validation. That's why you got to watch out for this. It's just a very short-term, short-sighted version of what you need to do, which is to just overall seek internal fulfillment, which can only come from you, friend. Now, what does your support network look like right now? And what are they telling you too? Do they see you work on your art and they're making fun of it? Are they looking at you like this is just some type of immature endeavor? Are they telling you that there's no future, that there's absolutely no jobs, that you're going to be poor and on the street, okay? Listen, I can personally relate to this a lot because literally my entire childhood, I was told that there would be no future and that there would be absolutely no point to me doing this, all right? You listening to somebody who's not even in the field that you want is a terrible idea. Like for example, would you listen to weight loss advice from somebody that's 600 pounds? Would you listen to financial advice from someone who's dead broke? No, you would not. You would want to listen to somebody who's actually really good in those fields, wouldn't you friend? So on that note, why not listen to creatives about how to be a professional creative? The second thing I need to let you know about this is that oftentimes too, the issue becomes people want you to be successful but not more successful than them. And that's a real hard thing. I want you to really take that one in right there because oftentimes people don't want to encourage you to pursue things that are greater, grander in scope and vision than what they personally have done or have or haven't accomplished. So you can't get enveloped into their version of their own reality, which they may or may not have even accomplished. One of the things that personally allowed me to move past this is I have this attitude of, okay, you don't think so? Watch me do it. The other thing is that you might be listening to a lot of people's opinions because you're trying to get a confirmation for what you should be doing. You don't need that confirmation of your direction, friend, because you already know it right here. You're just afraid to commit to it. Don't be like that. So what do TV, streaming services, video games, and social media all have in common? You might be using them for inspiration. Once you start to disproportionately look at how much time you're spending ingesting all of that media, instead of creating that media friend, what you're now a part of is escapism. You're gonna start to delude yourself into thinking that that is somehow helping you, but instead, you need to realize this is not an active process, okay? And that's something that I came to the hard realization of. And I would actually start to feel bad about myself because I knew that I was spending more time leveling up inside of a game than leveling up in real life. And the thing too, I wanna let you know, friend, is that if you attack your life and your artistic endeavors right now with the same exact tenacity and actually with the same exact strategies, as you would a video game, you will be way further ahead than most people within the next two to five years. This is a fact. Literally, you are already trained, if you are big time into video games, how to be successful. The difference is, is that you have to translate it into the real world, and that's all you have to do, because that's how I started to view my life as well. Take those side quests of life and make sure that you're putting those efforts into those authentic creation efforts and not just digesting content. And instead, make sure that your art is how you can positively cope with things and not just run away from them. A big part of you being an artist and definitely for you leveling up your skills a lot is that inevitably you're going to have to 
put forth a lot of effort. And then generally, what does that look like? Is that you're alone. But the thing I wanna let you know, friend, is that uh, it, this doesn't have to be solo leveling. Loneliness is one of the major art killers too. What I think is the hardest part about being an artist actually is the fact that you generally have to do it alone. So what you have to do is learn and find and source communities that you can be a part of, that you can share in that experience. What can that look like then? Maybe you can be one of those people that like draw on the subways and stuff. Maybe you can attend some free classes. And you know, another great thing is maybe you find yourself a great website full of people with some forums. Maybe you find a great Discord server. And if you're looking for a great Discord server, there's none other than mine right here down below the art community. Let's go ahead and join that out. We're a great little bustling community. And I would love for you to be a part of that. But this is really helpful for you because y'all are gonna feel more encouraged, more energized, and you're gonna feel more fulfilled when you can authentically share your art with other people and your art making struggles and you can get meaningful advice and feedback on it. And this is something that I wish more artists did. And I'm talking to my younger self too, because I used to just be alone all the time doing this. And then I found little ways to integrate myself into some nice little niche communities. And I encourage you to do the same. Now, one of the worst things that you could avoid doing at this point is to not like and subscribe. I love making content for you just like this. And if you appreciate it, go ahead and hit those and we'll continue now. All right, this is gonna be tough for some of you, but I really need you to hear me out on this one. Generally, if you're an artist, you're probably going to say that you do a lot of different things, right? You're drawing this week, you're painting this week, you're sculpting this week, you learn how to knit that week, and then the next week you're trying to do pottery. So with all of that, you're going to say, well, I, I just have a lot of diverse interests and I have a whole lot of things. I'm a multi-talented artist. And I can speak from experience on this because I'm traditionally trained and now I'm digitally trained and I spend most of my day actually, believe it or not, doing ceramics, okay? So the issue though is that I think that what you need to come to terms with if this is you and you're switching materials all the time, you're switching explorations all the time, is that in fact, friend, you are a toxic dabbler. Is this you? Tell me what it is down below that you're currently dabbling with and how long you're doing it. Because here's the biggest problem is that when you are a chronic dabbler, what you're actually doing is you're just switching all the time because you have a fear of commitment. One of the worst things that you can do is totally diversify all of your interests because then what it's gonna do is just distract you from getting really flipping good at one thing and then moving into everything else. So for my chronic dabbler friends, here's what you need to do. You need to set up some type of structure. Focus on one thing, just one freaking thing. And then set up some time where you're gonna be like, okay, well this week, hey, I'm gonna totally abandon my digital art and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop on the potter's wheel. I'm gonna try this out. I'm gonna try some charcoal drawing up over here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna try gouache painting because that would be fun too. Because you'll learn skills that you can translate and swap back and forth between other art materials. Have you ever done that before? Now, if you're watching this, I'm gonna go on a limb and say, you probably wanna monetize your art, right? You wanna get paid for it. You wanna have a career in it, right? But here's the problem, y'all. If you're only doing your art for a paycheck, you have traded your passion for that paycheck. And this is something that I see a lot of artists initially not think about, and then they slide into it, and they also slide into misery. They slide in the drudgery. What used to be extremely fun and exciting for you has now just become something that you dread. You don't wake up with excitement about that. And this can be either people that go ahead and they do private commissions all the way up through being a professional artist. Now, the biggest issue with this, y'all, is that inherently being paid uh, to be an artist is really awesome. But then the more you get into it, the more it loses its luster. And why does it lose its luster? It's because you've just lost your way. And what you need to be able to do, no matter what you're doing, is two things. Number one is that you need to make sure that whatever you're getting paid for is aligned to you personally here. So in other words, if you're gonna take commissions, like make sure that you're not just doing things that are easy money. Like I'm just gonna say it and everybody knows it, but not safe for work and furry art, super easy to get commissions and highly profitable. But I've talked to so many artists that have gotten out of that and switched their genres, switched their niches because they just didn't enjoy it. And there's a lot of people like that. If you're on that road, I'm not knocking you. I'm just giving it as an example there. Another thing that you need to make sure that you do is when art does become your full-time profession, like when it became mine and when I graduated college, you need to make sure that you always find small sparks of joy in everything that you do. Find small sparks of joy in just little things. Sometimes it's like preparing your little tools and equipment. Sometimes it's in just that one little spot on that artwork that you're working on. When you're given a task or you're given a project that you really don't love, find just one thing, just one thing that you actually will enjoy about it, focus on that, and then bring everything else around it. You will no longer 
be in the group of people that honestly 50% of professional artists quit when they enter an industry. Did you know that? So to avoid that, this is how you get out of it, friend. Don't ever swap your passions for that golden egg because it's not gonna be sustainable for you. Now, a big part of you sustaining your energy is what are you fueling yourself with? And this is something that a lot of artists don't think about. But y'all, a poor diet is one of the worst, most toxic habits because y'all need to stop glorifying the ramen and Hershey bar diet. Is this you? Because if this is you, friend, I just need to let you know what you're actually doing is you're killing your mojo. You're killing your creativity because you're not giving yourself what you actually need to be long-term sustainable. And then two, think about this. If if you feel bad about yourself, if you feel bad about the way you look, or even if you don't feel bad, but maybe sometimes you just look at yourself and you're like, I could be a little bit better than that. What you don't think about and what a lot of people don't think about, in fact, is that you're going to bring that energy into your artwork. And then how are you going to be able to perform at peak levels when you don't feel near peak with yourself because what's going to happen is this is going to lead to depression anxiety and extremely low energy so what do i recommend here i'm not saying that you need to be a health nut i'm not saying that you need to go ahead and switch to an all vegan grass-fed diet or anything like that what i'm saying here is that i would just recommend hey how can you switch your diet to be just 50% better? You don't need to be 100% all the time unless you're trying to be in like an Instagram model or something, but how can you make little adjustments? And it's gonna feel weird, but here's the thing. After 30 days, you will start to feel sustainably different about it. I promise you that. Try it out. All right, I bet everybody here is guilty of this one which is when you go ahead and you look online and you're gonna start to see all the trends that are happening, right? You're gonna start to see everybody's doing Bowsette and now everyone's doing Bowsette and now everyone's doing the Jacko challenge and then everyone's doing this character and oh, now everyone's drawing this thing up over here. And then that encourages you because obviously you want a little piece of that social media pie, don't you? And you wanna go ahead and jump on board and say, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this too. The problem here though, is that inevitably you're gonna get sucked into attention seeking behavior. You need to make sure that what you're doing is not trying to gain the approval of others. Instead, I just wanna ask you this friend, your current efforts right now and every single day, are they aligned to the future you? In other words, what is you in five to 10 years going to be doing? Is that going to help and support it? Now, I'm not saying that you can't do some fan art every once in a while. I'm not saying that you can't go ahead and do some things that you don't normally do inside your normal wheelhouse because that is healthy, my friend. But if you're only doing things because you're hoping to siphon a little bit of attention onto you, you need to pause and ask yourself this, why is that important to you? What are you hoping to fulfill from that? What's the hole that you're trying to fill? Because if that's you, then you need to realize that that is a very toxic habit and it's not something that any amount of followers or subscribers or likes or follows is ever going to fix. Only you can. But then here's another thing too, why don't you use your art development to help fill that void? What are you doing and how are you creating energy for yourself? Are you like trying to replace your energy with lack of sleep, with like loads of caffeine? Are you trying to do it by little cheats and hacks? How many energy drinks are you drinking? Well, here's the big problem, y'all. The major reason why most artists have low energy levels is not because they're tired. It is not because they're actually physically exhausted, but it's because you're largely inactive. And I get it because what are you doing as an artist? You're sitting down all the time. I'm sitting down while I'm recording this right now too, right? So with that, what I would encourage you to do as a combat measure to a very toxic habit, which is inactivity, is to figure out how you can get a little bit more activity in your day. And this can be really simple, y'all. Like there's so many things. You don't have to buy a big expensive gym membership or none of that, okay? And then here's the big awesome thing about it is you're gonna have more energy because your body is in motion and then you're also gonna have more inspiration, you're gonna have more ideas, you're gonna feel compelled to work on things. One of the worst things that you can ever do for yourself is to be inactive and just be okay with it because inevitably you're going to fall into some really bad chronic health problems. Like how many artists do you know about? And I've seen loads of videos on YouTube about this. People that struggle with back pain and hip pain and joint pain. And if this is you friend, this is one of the ways that you can start to naturally get out of it without corrective surgery, without supplements or anything like that. Here's what you want to think. Motion creates more motion. Inactivity only breeds more inactivity. So what are you doing to combat that and promote yourself to the highest level? So from being a teacher, I'm going to tell you that this is one of the worst things that artists say. 
Do you ever say to yourself, it's good enough? Do you ever think I'm done? Do you ever start to get into the habit of thinking that there's just absolutely nobody in the world that can tell you what you need to do to do better? Are you always 100% satisfied with just everything that you do? Because if so, you might have a little bit of an ego problem you need to check. Y'all, I've met so many artists throughout my career who have just thought that even basic exercises are below them. And here's what I wanna let you know, friend, if this is you, I wanna just help wake you up here, is that there's nothing that you can do in art that is a waste of your time. The only waste of your time is literally you wasting your time. So don't get caught in this trap where you're gonna think that you're too good to do this, or you already understand that, or you've got everything down pat, because I guarantee you, that that's not gonna be the case. I also see this, by the way, I'm gonna throw some minor shade at you who are complaining about you're not getting commissions. However, though, you're also not doing the things that I've talked about in all my videos, which you can find all down below here. I'm gonna tell you, you're not finding your niche. I'm gonna tell you, you're not getting your examples. I'm gonna tell you, you're probably still using commission sheets or foolish things like that that don't work. So if you are thinking, yes, I'm doing good enough, you always wanna question that from a positive perspective of, okay, I'm good with what I got right now, but how can I do better? What's the next level? What's the next step for you? Because when you can do that, you're gonna blast off. So can you still be an artist in this current day and age? You might be thinking that around now, right? And here's what I wanna let you know, friend, that there are definitely things that you're doing right now that are absolutely killing your productivity and killing your creativity. And I wanna let you know, yes, you still can be an artist, and you're gonna find this video right here to let you know what to do and not to do about it.